Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Grace Grella Show. I am Grace Grella, your intuitive host, and as always, we're here to get you into the positive zone. So if you need information about your love life, your finances, family, friends, holidays coming up, your health, health insurance, that's a big topic nowadays. <laughs> um, hey, we're here for you, and we also bring you love from above. So, you know, you've been with the holidays and feeling bluesy and missing the people who have... Um, left their bodies and are uh, just energetically hanging out with you, hey, we can, we can hook you up. We can hook you up. And why is that, you ask? Because I have the internationally renowned, fabulous, gifted, I could go on for the whole show about how fabulous she is. And she's a Gemini, so of course she's just wonderful. <laughs> the one, the only, Suzanne Northrup. Suzanne, oh baby, thank you so much for being, I was hysterical laughing when I heard there was an earthquake that went through New York. I said, no, 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 that's just Suzanne coming to this TV studio. <laughs> Energetically, your aura is unbelievable, and I know everybody tells you that. No, not then, everybody. It's always nice to hear again. <laughs> it's been a while. I've been heard that, Grace. So okay, that's, that's well, nice. I'm telling you, honey, I'm brazen enough to tell you no, I'm that's an Aries. Good. That's good. That's good. <laughs> okay. Um, and honest. So it's, it's about um, your gift, and I love that uh, all of your published books are, you know, um, always on the move and reprinted, and uh, your most recent one is a cookbook. Is it... Literally a cookbook? No, it or? sometimes ends up in the cookbook section, but no, it's actually called a medium's cookbook, ah. Recipes for the Soul. Okay. So. so you give them advice to keep their soul cooking, good looking? Yeah, What's well, it? actually, you know, this is, um, this, th this book was a, I mean, every book you write, it always, is, it always has a meaning and you do it for a particular reason or whatever it was. Um, but this one was actually kind of dear to my heart because um, I, I, when I was going to make the, when I was going to write the next book, I all of a sudden I had this like this vision of you know people come up to me after my events after my seminars and stuff and so many times they would say to me like I would do anything I could to have another conversation with my mom or my son or my husband and uh, and, and, I, and I got to thinking about that and I thought like you know there has really never a book that's ever been written about really like the way or the ways or options of what, how we can go about actually kind of like doing that. And, um, and, then, and then, then I lost my nephew. And that, that sort of that theme sort of like coming, came back to me again. And then what happened is that, you know, I was sitting around like with a bunch of friends and somehow one said something about, well, you should write a cookbook. And I like, I looked at them like, I don't cook, this is a joke, right? Uh, but even if you don't know how to cook, you know that there's a process of cooking. You know, you got to take things out of the cupboard, or you know, you know. Sometimes we know oil and water don't mix, and you know. And I mm -hmm. kept thinking, like, I could put it as a structure, like a cookbook, of all the processes. That's kind of like how I put it together. So it's called, you know, a medium's cookbook, a medium's cookbook, medium, small, medium, large cookbook, recipes for the soul. So that's really what it's about. It's a step by step. You know, there's a whole lot of different chapters. You can you can skip through them and whatever it is, and that's kind of what it's about. I took the Evelyn Wood speed reading course and get to, yeah, and cut to and, the chase. Yeah, and, and get it. And you let's know. get to dessert because that's our favorite, favorite right? right? Yeah, give yeah, me some yeah. sugar, sugar. Yeah, yeah. So, so but I, I think that it's definitely worthwhile for people to. Um, to look into and to read and, yes. and um, it, it's it's if you and also because you know it, it also revalidates you know a lot of my other books about that you know we we got this well we, we have to always wrap our heads around the fact is that you know n number one because the people that, st that left their body they didn't stop loving us, nor did we stop loving them. Absolutely. So that we know that that's a continued thing of the most important thing in the world, which of course we know is love. love. 
Mm -hmm. That's why we have flowers over there. That's so right. that ongoing Which theme. Which will be yours after the show, by well, the way. thank you, sweetie. That's great. <laughs> I'll, I'll take them with me. Uh, so, you know, it, that's that ongoing theme. And, and, and when we can wrap our heads around it and realize that, you know, the, 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 the dead folks' job, and they still have jobs, is to let us know any way that they possibly can. And they will let us know in ways. And so sometimes, you know, you know, humans we're, we're, we're thick. Sometimes we need a little, little, you know, push. You think? You think? A little push. And uh, so, hey, look, I do this for a living. I and know. I need more signs than around yeah. the LIE. Right, exactly. And I don't know about you, but <laughs> please, girlfriend. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, so you know, that was kind of like why I did that. But you know, I mean, from the book that I wrote, you know, before that one, you know, which is Everything Happens for a Reason, which is actually my biggest seller. Uh, it's in several different languages, and and you can get it obviously, you know, audio. And you can also download most of my books are all done. Uh, and love is the universal language. Yes, so it is. Yeah, go. and then that's you why know. it's a, a bestseller. Thank you. And then you know that's when did you th when did you first begin? When did I get this way? Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, I've been this way pretty much my whole life. I, I had this since I was like five years old. And uh, you know, I think when I, I think like anything in life, I think when you have things happen to you when you're, when you're younger in your life. I think it's very different than when you get them, you, you get him later. I, I think it depends on what it is, uh, but we know that like some kids can throw a ball. We know that we come through a whole generation now. Kids can just like they do everything. They don't even think about it. You know, uh, we know that Mozart started at five. You know, so children they don't have a lot of like you know not reasons for do something unless you know adults stop them for not reason for doing something. Right. And they're and, and they're just and they're limited. And so it's like whatever like the, you know that that sort of floats their boat that they want to do, they just kind of like do it. Like I said, unless they had bad experiences. Well, that was sort of my experience. Um, but I didn't have like, I have to say, you know, whether it's not a credit or whatever it is, I didn't have like, I, I didn't come from a family that was like, I didn't come from a religious family. Uh, although my mother had a strong sense of God, my mother has a strong sense of God. Um, I didn't come from a, an intellectual family. I came from a rural, you know, farming background, and I was an only child for a long time, for like nine years, and so I spent a lot of time like in the woods and not in the woods and whatever. Nature. So I had all these friends. <laughs> of course, no one else saw them, but I saw them, you know. Mm -hmm. And I don't think I don't think you think about it until you're told not to think about it. So I kind of went through my life that way, and then when I was 13, my maternal grandmother, my paternal grandmother, passed. And that was like kind of a whole other thing because here this woman that I had always known to be this, you know, larger in life type woman, and she was literally larger in life. Um, I mean, she's probably as 175, I don't know, like, you know, she was up there. And then when she died, or right before her, her, right, right before her physical death, she got down to like probably 70 or 80 pounds. So this bigger life woman went down to this. The incredible shrinking the woman The incredible shrinking woman, yeah. right. Yeah. And then the next time I saw her, she was big again. And that was, of course, after her death. Right. And so. And don't you love that they always do that? Yeah. Um, yeah. Spirit will always present themselves <laughs> right. to us when they thought they were hot, when they were bees yes. knees. When so they it's were, like yeah. I'm, I'm thinking, like you know, she comes to visit me. I tell my Hollywood story. She comes and stands about in my bed, and it's all like, great. The house is going to be normal again. Graham is well, and whatever it was. Right. And then there was a you know a process that happened, like. My mother said, well, we're going to go to the parlor. And I go like, well, it must be a party at the parlor. And then, of course, I realized it was the funeral parlor. But I, 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 I had a hard time connecting all this because the last time I saw her, and I always, I always use this experience as like if every single person saw somebody that they loved, particularly if they had a traumatic passing or, you know, long-term illness or something. And, you know, when you see something, especially when you're children, you're very impressionable. When you've seen somebody that looked that way and then they're well again, you'd have a very different view of death. So to me, she looked better at that time than the last time that I saw her. Mm -hmm. But of course, you know, I, I had to kind of figure it out. I mean, because 13's a fun age to begin with, but I had to kind of like figure out what kind of was going on. Uh, and, I, and I did, it took me, you know, a, a little while, but in, 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 in those days, in those days, there wasn't like a lot of words around. There wasn't like medium, there was, you know, those didn't sort of exist. Um, and so I had to kind of like sort of figure, figure it out. And then when I was, 19, I moved to New York City. I moved to a big city and had all these friends that were, you know, shrinks or studying to be shrinks or whatever it is. And they knew I was different. We didn't know, again, what we would call me as being different, that I really wasn't great, but I was different and I kind of did this different thing. And so I kind of like figured out my way and, and, and the rest is history. It's the only job I've ever had. 
you know, and I was a and pioneer. And I love, I know? love that you were blessed with it. Gemini <laughs> rules communication. Yeah. And you yeah. are the communicator. Yeah, and, and interesting because, well, you probably know that. I, I, I was one of the very first people to do any media and TV in, in New York City. Um, in 1978 and 79, no one even did this. Uh, the only way you could even Trailblazer. see, yeah, you're the, the only way you could even see a medium were in psychic fairs. And I started actually one of the first psychic fairs that I was was well, New York City and then Long Island. And so I would do a lot of the fairs in Rockville Center and stuff. And I came out here, and actually that is where um, I started doing my psychic fairs. But at the age of 15 is where I met John Edward. <laughs> so he was like the first, so he, you know, so sort of, I was sort of like the trailblazers for, for sort of like for him and a lot of other people. So it was, you know, it was an interesting, it was a very interesting journey. And I, I always think about how that, it was such an interesting journey to do this, like, number one, it, there was no media. Uh, number two, it was like nobody really knew kind of what mediums were about. Um, number three is that you did not go into this work for the money because you were getting three dollars. That's what you were getting for a session, I, and that's a fact. Um, it, it, you, 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 you came from, it from a whole different level of ethics and a whole different level of honoring to do this work and what that kind of meant and that you, you got a chance to kind of go to a place most people don't to with another person. And, and like really in the core of the intimacy of their hearts with their loved ones. So there's a real privilege and honoring that kind of like goes with that. And I was kind of like trained in old school because after I sort of figured out the deal, I you know, sort of studied with some of the, you know, the, the top British mediums that were you know, much, much older than me. So that's kind of was sort of my trail. But, but um, Arthur Fenley? Did we I didn't do Arthur Fenley, but a lot of people who came out of it, Arthur Fenley. And, and what you obviously know about Arthur Fenley is that what a lot of people don't know is that, you know, um, from my understanding, England is the only country that spiritualism is considered to be a religion. And Arthur Finley sort of came out of the school of Arthur Conan Doyle, which a lot of people don't, aren't, don't even know. Arthur Conan Doyle was, of course, Sherlock Holmes. And they don't realize that he was responsible for a lot of the mediumship from, you know, from Blavatsky and, 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 yeah, and all Adam, of those yeah. people. And that was, really, that was really the beginning of mediumship. So that was sort of, that's the, the world that I came from. Uh, very different world now. And, uh, and, and, I, and it is always my hope that, you know, whomever I connect with or whoever I work with, um, particularly if they're younger than me, uh, because I, I won't be here forever, I'll be here forever, but I won't physically be here forever, that, right. they, that they carry with that, because some of that's gotten lost in the, in the wind in a lot of different professions. I, I don't want to say just mine, but, you know, it was like we were, we, we came from a world where, you know, people that were older or elders, or uh, we learned from them. They became our mentors. Uh, and that's where we learn the best of the best, you know. So, you know, and I've had, you know, a lot of people in my life, throughout my life, in, in television and radio and all different kind of professions that, that really have sort of stayed core to it. There was an interview that um, Bruce Dern gave, it was a few months, I think it was right, right after he got the nomination for the award, and he's, I think he's 90 now. And actually, it was only, he has the only family, by the way, that all, like, all won, you know, Academy Awards, uh, his wife, his daughter, and, and, and him. But anyway, so in his interview, they said to him, like, you know, w when are you going to, like, retire, you know? And he, like, looked at the guy like he wanted to belt him. And he goes, like, retire? I'm just learning my craft. Well, in acting, that's what you did. It was all about ensemble, and that's how you, you all learn to become better at your craft as your ensembles. That was the core. Because that's energy work as well. It's exactly, it's not all about one star. It's about we're all energetic, and every single role within it, you know, we know becomes important. Absolutely. So, you know, a, a lot of, you know, we know that, you know, a lot of those that, that, that started a lot of the schools from NYU and stuff that, that had that rooting, they, they continued with that, and they, they looked, you know, for the De Niro's and the, you know, that were going to be the ones that are going to sort of set those things. So, you know, that's where we learn, you know, because you can't, you can't give somebody experience in life. You, you have to go out and do it. But if you can hang out with somebody that's been around the mulberry bush for a long time or enough of a long time, they can give you some great tips. You still got to learn to do it. You still got to do the work. You, 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 there's, oh, there's absolutely. no getting around. You got to do the work. Well, there, you know, that's like the old adage. Well, there are two ways to get to Carnegie Hall: practice, 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 practice. and being a prodigy. Right. And there you go. And we've got <laughs> and Elisa you know, hanging tell you on the phone. Awesome. One second, we got to take this uh, call. Elisa, are you there? Yes, I am. Hey, honey, how can we help you? Birthday girl on uh, Sunday, huh? I know the big five nine. Woo woo! Your baby. No worries. Uh, hope not. 
Well, my question for tonight is, I guess it's a two-parter. Uh, my husband has an upcoming surgery December 11th, and I wanted to know if you see that being successful, and also if there's any messages from departed loved ones. Okay, well, the departed loved ones uh, definitely is going to be um, a, a Suzanne's um, uh, ex expertise, so we're, um, and mine as well, but she's the, the world internationally renowned superstar sitting with me. So I will um, definitely uh, uh, ask her, would you like to start off with the... Uh, with the dead people? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, first of all, do you spell your name with an E or an I? With an E. Okay. Um, so just real quick here, your mom's passed? Yes. Okay. Her mom's passed? Yes. And there's a third woman connected to them. So it's either an aunt or it's, it's a, either a great aunt or it's an aunt because there are three of them coming together. It, it's my aunt, my mother's sister. Did she pass before your mom? She passed after my mom. Okay, because they're showing me in a row. One of them has a birth of passing in January. They're giving me the month of January very strong. Oh, my God, that was my mother. Okay, got it. So she's in the lead. <laughs> okay. Okay, now she knew your husband, didn't she? Oh, oh, yes. Okay, okay, she likes him. That's why I'm, I'm mentioning it. So okay. it's like she's going to go into the surgery with him, whatever. So <laughs> she, She's kind of a hoot, by the way, uh, Elisa. i got to say that she's, she's remaining having her humor. Do you understand this? Yes. Yes. Now, I, I assume she's speaking about me, but I never assume anything with dead people. Who has the granddaughter? Well, I don't have a granddaughter, but maybe she's referring to my daughter. Yes, that would be her granddaughter. Yes. Got it. And she's talking about very strong connection to this young lady. Yes. Okay. So she's talking about, do pass on to her mom that, you know, that I stopped by tonight and I gave my love to her. Do you understand? Yes. They were very, very strongly connected. She told me the heart really strongly connected. Do you understand this? Yes, I do. Uh, now, I got to take this to be, if it's not yours, it's got to be, there's, a, there's, there's two dead dogs here. <laughs> Uh, yes. <laughs> are, are they yours or hers? <laughs> yes. Okay. Well, they're, they're, they're coming tonight, and she says they're in good hands. She's taking good care of them for you, so you, you need to know that real strong. Now, I think she's meaning female, but if she's not meaning female, there's, 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 uh, there's a person that she's making reference to, a four-letter J name. So there's a Jane, there's a John, there's a Joan, something like that she's talking about. It could be first or middle name, please. Uh, well, um, my son is Jason. But Jason. That's not a female. So yes. this would be the grandson then. Yes. All right. So she doesn't want to leave out him. That's nice of her. <laughs> okay. Wow. Uh, is he the baby? Yes. Okay. Got it. All right. So he came after the other one, right? R right. The daughter that she's making. Now I, I got to ask you this, please. So are you? Okay. Are you still living where you were living when she was here? Yes. Okay. So this is like. The, the, this is what I would call like the center place and where we we spent a lot of family deals uh, mostly at her house but she has been of course in my house we, we didn't okay. live close so her house was like the center then absolutely all right because she's talking about where all the gatherings happened yes and she's talking about your your mama must have been very into family my dear because when they talk this way to me it means a family was like a very big deal and the gathering the interconnections of the family was a very big deal Yes. And I would have to say that the way, besides the obvious that you have honored her, is that you've honored that tradition. Yes. Do you understand? Yes. So it comes as a very big thanks. Yes. Pretty sweet, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, two other things she's mentioning to me. I, 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 I want to say that this is a watch, but it also looks like it might be a bracelet watch or something like that. that she used to wear, <clears throat> excuse me, on her wrist. And it's I, I am totally... My mouth is dropping. <laughs> My grandmother had this watch, and it looked like a bracelet, but the top l had diamonds, and it opened I was going to say, because I was going to show like, you, it's got stones on the top of it. Yes, yes, and that was my grandmother's, and she left it to my mother when she died, and I actually have it. You it, I, it, that's what she tells me. That's the honor, and that she'd be passed down. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. And it, it, this was not, this, understand, this was, you know, what we talk, this is not about money. This was about honoring memorabilia of the family, the passed down. Do you understand? Legacy. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But it's interesting because she does show me the stones, but it's interesting because they look like they're different coloring to me for some reason. I don't know why. Um, no. They no. are the same coloring? Yes. But they're not diamonds, are they? They are. They are. Okay, interesting. Okay. Uh, and and, and it's, are, there, are they on each side or something? What I, what I see it that way? Uh, it's sort of like a little clustering. Yeah, okay. 
Yeah, because I it, it doesn't feel like it's on one side. It feels like I'm, I'm this is the way I am. <laughs> oh, this is the way I think, but this is the way I am. Uh, let's just yeah. let's just say Suzanne knows what time it is. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. right. Z snap. So. I mean I'm 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 applauding you here, Thank Suzanne. You. That Thank is you. like awesome. Yeah. And Elise, um, I know you're in shock because Suzanne was not only on point. She was above and beyond here. I, I'm just like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is what she does. Yeah. <laughs> Geminis are fabulous, okay? That's, they can't help themselves. And, um, and she already told you, I don't even, she made my job easy. I don't even have to tell you your husband's going to sail through and be brilliant with this surgery because um, all the invisible entourage <laughs> is going to be in the, in, in the surgery room with him. Oh, great. Yeah. Yeah. Now, is this heart surgery? No. Okay, what's going on with his um, aorta? Um, nothing that I know of. Okay, if they, um, after the surgery, if they say, well, you know, they were a little concerned or whatever, they might want to keep an eye on it. Okay, okay. Should, should I tell you what type of surgery it is? Sure. Spine on his neck. Okay, um, I'm not concerned about that. That's going to be okay. okay. I'm concerned about his heart. Okay. Um, now, is his, fa his father's passed, right? Yes. And did his father have heart issues? Yes, he did. Yeah, because, um, chills. This is why I think his dad, Daddy's Home, I'm hearing that song in my head, um, that he's concerned he, genetically, he's apologizing. He says, you know, I had the bad heart. And he said, and, you know, he schmucked up, my, you know, did this to my son. Um, but he wants... Uh, you just be aware of it, keep an eye on it, because nowadays, with modern medicine and technology, it's a breeze. There's no issues. I just got chills. So right. that's the message from his father, who art okay. in heaven. Okay. Well, his dad died of a heart attack, mm -hmm. and come to think of it, my husband's 61, but at 49, he did have a stent put in. Yeah. Bingo. There okay. you go. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, they don't forget things up there. You know, that's why they make us look brilliant, because we're just communicating with the info they're giving to us. And so and, and, and sometimes, keep, keep an eye sometimes on Sometimes surgery it. like this puts stress on stress you. Stress on you know? it, yeah, absolutely. And, and, and it's, it's not uncommon for somebody to go into surgery, and then they have, like, they have they have whole trauma, surgery. and then they, they have, like, blockage and all this, you know, it all, it's all disrespect because it's a trauma to the system. Right. He's going to be fine, in. but we're going to cut to the chase. He's going to be fine. He's going to be fabulous. Yep. Why? He's got you, babe, as someone oh, Cher would sing. Okay? So it's going to be a happy birthday. Your prayers are going to be answered. You've got somebody storming heaven because I'm seeing uh, the Blessed Mother around you. Are you Catholic? No, I'm not. All right. Somebody Catholic is praying to uh, Mother Mary for you. Okay. All right? And hey, She's a good woman. She's a nice Jewish woman on the other side that looks after people, okay? okay. Um, she's uh, she's going to be in the operating room, too, I'm hearing. Okay? All right. Um, I also want to say, who is um, who is Marty uh, uh, to your uh, father-in-law? I don't know a Marty to my father-in-law, but I have a cousin on my side whose husband is Marty. Okay, something about Marty and something about, um, there's something to do with money and good news and somehow you benefit. Okay. All right, so that's always good. Cha-ching. All right, love makes the world go round, but money does grease those wheels. All right, so just smile and accept it and say uh, happy holidays to me, okay? Okay. All right, and um, uh, I'm so happy for you that you got to experience Suzanne this evening because isn't she fabulous? I, I, I am still saying wow. That's I all I could say is wow. I know. I'm, I've been doing this all my life, and I'm saying wow. Okay? So it's, but when you're in the, the energetic field of someone this awesome, it's just a gift and a blessing, and I'm so happy for you. This is like your birthday gift, honey. Yes, thank you so much. Happy so birthday. Happy so birthday. Thank you. Thank you. And I love that it's the opposition, the Gemini Sag thing. Because you're a Gemini, uh -huh. she used to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Woo. That, that's right, because we're in there now. Yeah, we? now we have right. audience members here. And uh, Annie, Dreamboat Annie, can you please, uh, uh, Carlene, can you help Ann to uh, the microphone, please? So she doesn't trip over wires? Yeah. <coughs> that's the only thing we're concerned about here. Um, two minutes. Wow. Well, we're going to get her um, up to the uh, microphone. And we'll get to her next next show. Okay. But it's going to take a while for that to happen. Okay. Um, and while um, 
and doesn't time just go so quickly and yeah, like yeah. we're in another dimension here yeah but we can still start with Annie because she's another Gemini oh. oh okay there you go you got a specific question for us Ben do I have a question got talking to the mic honey um, yes I don't know my son's been having problems getting a, a job and I'm wondering if there's anything that anybody sees about him for the future. I don't know. Okay, her son Bill is um, a, a, a brilliant uh, marketing. Uh, he's he's just what Astro? When's his birthday? September, September 19th. Oh, so he's a Virgo. He's okay. a Virgo. Well, now with all the planets coming into Capricorn, this should give him vroom, the um, the impetus and the uh, the wherewithal to uh, hook up with s some employment. I'm thinking, all right, okay. but not until January. I'm hearing. Okay. Okay. That's fine. Um, and he's a little cranky. Oh yeah. yeah. I, I think oh. he's given up a little bit. Yes. That's a big, that's, you can, you yes. can never, ever stop because the day that you stop is the next day that it's being handed to you. Yeah. And, he and it's all, you know, you, you, you know, they always, you know, they always use, always use the expression about, you know, there's such thing as educated derelicts. Yeah. But never stop persevering. Never stop persevering. Yeah. yeah so we because, don't want him you know, tearing up his lotto ticket yeah. before God draws the winning number. No, he finally, he he is working part-time with um, UPS for good. the season. He's got to get himself So I think I think it's lifting his spirits a little bit. And that's good. He's a, a Virgo. Bit. He's yeah. an earth sign. They love to You know to what? Do. If you're sitting around and you're looking at the computer and you're waiting for something to come in, it's dead energy. Yeah. Right. Well, pun yeah. intended, but it's dead energy. It's, sure. And and, yeah. and uh, I, 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 I get like there's a part of him that's given up. Yeah, you know, that, and definitely. it's sort of like, it's like you know, if, if, if he's if he's a smart man, he's got a brilliant mind. It'd be terrible to see it wasted. But you know what? Sometimes, you know, we have these, we all have them. It's life. Mm. It's called life. <laughs> Doesn't come with a manual. It's called life. And stuff happens. We use stuff. Right. The S word, stuff. Right. Stuff. And 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 those are you know, those can be phenomenal, great, great learning tools. They humble us. Yes. They, you know, they give us other opportunities in our life that we might never have. Mm -hmm. But within that, you have to always, like, try to, well, listen, we're human. We have our moments. We get down. We, you know, it's human. But yeah. it's like, y y there's a point where you, like, have to, like, get back up on the darn horse, you know? Right. Get back up on Pull the darn horse. Pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Yeah, by, by yeah. your bootstraps. That's why I wear boots. And yeah. Don't it. go away. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. For everybody watching uh, live, we're going to come right back. For everybody watching the rebroadcasted show, hey, you got to see the second show with Suzanne. She is the bomb. <laughs> we love you, Suzanne. Thank you. Yay. <coughs> yeah.